to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and we're going to continue on our NAT series and cover NAT troubleshooting, or basically, what are the common things that you will forget or you will mistype when you're trying to set up NAT. So in the previous video, we set up NAT. We we're able to ping from Router 1 to Router 2. We we're also able to ping from PC1 and PC2 all over to the loopback of Router 2. So this works perfectly. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at router 1's config and we're going to erase a couple things. So let's do a show run. And we'll space through this a little bit. And you could see this access list statement. Access list 1 permit 10 10 12 0 permit 10 10 13 0. This is the access list that catches internal traffic and it defines interesting traffic to be translated. So it looks at anything starting at 10, 10, 12, 0, and it goes, cool, I need to translate that. It also looks at anything starting with 10, 10, 13, and says, okay, I need to translate that as well. So what happens if we blow away this access list and leave everything else the same? Something you might see on the test, something you might see in real life too. So it's space, conf t, no access list, one. All right, so that is gone. And we're going to make sure we don't have any lingering IP NAT translation stuff, so that's good. Okay, so our access list is gone. We could do a show access list, and nothing is there. All right. Moment of truth. Let's see if we can ping to the outside. I'm going to go to PC1. PC1, we are going to the up arrow, ping all twos. Hey, we have a successful ping. Hmm, what happened there? Well, maybe NAT is still working. Let's go over to R1. Show IP NAT translations. Oh, nothing's there. Well, I've got my debug turned on on router 2. Let's see what happened. We have a ping coming from source of 10, 10, 12, 0. So the ping did go through. The reason pings went through is because we have a routable protocol running. We've, well, we've got a static route going from R1 to R2, R2 to R1. We've got a default route for PC1, which is 10, 10, 12, 1. So this is a routable link here. And so simply what happened is it's actually pretty easy. PC1 sent the pack to R1. R1 just said, cool, I'm just going to route it to R2. R2 flings it back to R1, and PC1 thinks everything is fine. From router's 2 perspective, it's as if NAT was not turned on. And in fact, uh, it isn't. We, there is no translation going on here, 10, 10, 12, 2. So it pings, it routes. Slices and dices, but there is no translation. 10, 10, 12, 2. So nothing is hidden. So that's what happens when you forget that access list. You would think it would actually deny all traffic, but it doesn't. It simply just doesn't translate. So we go up here. Conf T. We're just going to add back those access list commands. Access list 1, permit... 10, 10, 12, 0. It's a wildcard mask. And access list 1, 10, 10, 13. And same wildcard mask. We go back to PC1. Hit the up arrow, ping. It pings successfully. Take a look at our router 2. And you can see now our source is 140.111. Things are being translated. And as the final verification, show IP NAT translations. And we have a translation table and an entry right there. Okay, so that's what you will see if you forget the access list. Let's see what else we could forget. We'll do a show run. And a very common thing you will see 
this command right here, IP NAT inside source list one pool my NAT pool. What happens if you forget this overload command? All right, let's copy that. Conf T, right click, whoa. And control A and just put a no in front of that. Hit the upper again, control A, erase the no. Whoops. So it'll be IP NAT inside source list one, pool my NAT pool, and just erase the overload word right there. All right, so now we have NAT without overload. Let's go to PC1. We'll go to PC1, hit the up arrow ping. Ping works successfully. Yeah, hello, that works pretty good. So do IP NAT translations on router one. Hey, we have a translation, that's cool. Now we go over to PC2. PC2, we hit the up arrow, ping 2222, it dies, look at that. PC1 was able to go through, PC2 was not. Hit the up arrow, show IP NAT translations. So what happened here is that PC1 is the first one to get out, it pings, it gets an entry in the routing table, and because there is no NAT overload, it is now bound to, to this external IP of 140.111 and no one else can get out. Now what we can do, we could clear IP NAT translations. We could clear the table, have to add a star to that, clear the table. And now let's go over to PC2. We'll make PC2 go out first. It will successfully ping. But now what's gonna happen is when you try to ping from PC1, PC1 is going to time out or it's not going to get there. So ping, all twos, it's going to die out. So when you forget that overload command, you're only going to let one PC out. The first PC to do traffic is going to be successful. But after that, everything is denied because there's no space in the NAT table for another outbound translation. All right, so that's the two common things that can happen. You forget the access list or you mess up the access list and you forget the overload word when you want to get multiple PCs out to the internet. Thanks for watching.